Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. People like to talk about scams on the internet all the time. But today's scam is the GTA Definitive Edition. Now you might be like, but Muda, didn't this happen a while ago? You're absolutely right. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I know some people are gonna be like, Muda, why are you always negative, okay? Are you ever positive about a video game? Absolutely, I just played some Persona 4 Golden. You know how great that game holds up? absolute banger, all right? You know, I'm looking forward to playing some Resident Evil 4 remake, you know, a remake that actually remakes portions of the game, all right? Changes some story beats up, provides a fresher experience. But uh, when it comes to negatives in video games, there's a fair bit of them, okay? Especially in modern AAA video gaming. Now, the reason why this topic matters so much to me is I grew up with Grand Theft Auto, okay? GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, that is my jam. You know the PlayStation 2? There are some people watching this video who don't know about the PlayStation and you know what it looks like, all right? They're like, what, PlayStation 2? I was born during the PlayStation 4. Heck, I've been, I've been drinking, I've been breastfeeding while the PS5 has been out, okay? There's people that are that young, okay? They understand. Some people have never seen a console this old. They don't know what it's like to grow up with Sly Cooper, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear, all right? Final Fantasy X. So yeah, when I grew up, I played the heck out of these three games, right? I like these games. These games have childhood memories. Do you understand as a kid, one of the coolest experiences was staying up late, driving out of Los Santos, doing a bunch of missions in the countryside, and then driving into San Fierro like, whoa, they put three cities into one game? That's what, I didn't even think that could happen. I didn't even think that was possible. That was insane to me. But of course, you know, growing up, all right, you definitely have a different perspective of things. So obviously remakes exist, right? So Grand Theft Auto, uh, you know, the definitive edition, the trilogy, whatever you want to call it comes out and we all laughed at it. We all made fun of it. And since then it's gotten better. Now, of course, I want to divert attention away from GTA just a little bit. You know, very recently, another example of a bad cash grab came out, Persona 3 Portable. Now, I like Persona, okay? They just released Persona 3 Portable on Steam. All right, if we actually look it up together. Yeah, they're selling this for $27, okay? Now, you might be like, what's wrong with this, Muda? This is a portable version of Persona 3, meaning that they literally just took the PSP version of the game, ported it over to the PC, barely... All right, and they're selling that for $28. Now 28 bucks, all right, that's still a lot less than 60, and I'm sure some people can get away with it, but you have to understand, they took a version of the game that was designed to downport from the PlayStation 2 all the way to a handheld, older than some of you watching, all right, and they decided to take that version and just put it on PC. By all means, that is a PSP ISO file sitting on somebody's computer, okay? You could actually mod the PSP version of Persona 3 Portable with the animated cutscenes, with better visuals, upscale that yourself, versus paying Atlas for doing the absolute bare minimum in video game porting, right? So again, when a lot of these remakes and remasters come out, they're not really remasters, okay? They're very minimum effort jobs thrown out. So when it comes to GTA, all right, the definitive edition, obviously it's a little bit better than Persona 3. They remade the games underneath Unreal Engine. They look better. The lighting is definitely more shinier. And, uh, you know, a lot of the general gameplay enhancements have been done. Obviously, GTA 3 and Vice City haven't aged the best, right? Like for instance, GTA 3 doesn't even have a map screen when you pause the game. Now with these definitive edition re-releases, you've got a weapon wheel so you can change weapons even quicker. You've got, um, I, I guess you could say better vehicle handling uh, from what I've heard, from what I've felt. Um, you've also got an entire system where you've got GPS lines on the map. So like older versions, like older gamers like me, you don't have to remember where the gun store is in GTA 3 or you don't have to get lost doing the mission photo opportunity on San Andreas and constantly flip your car over. So again, a lot of these quality of life improvements have been brought over to the definitive edition and by all accounts, it's not the worst gaming experience. Now, to understand, there are a few things that definitive, the Definitive Edition will never get, such as the audio. Obviously, Rockstar Games is not gonna pay for the audio again, even though it would be peanuts for the company. They don't care, just like they don't care about Red Dead Online, just like they don't care about the security for GTA Online, absolutely, even though those games, GTA specifically, brings in what, like a billion a year? Again, Rockstar could care way less about any of that, all right? Not important. As long as you've paid them, they're fine. They're happy. They're golden. 
So of course, when it comes to the uh, prospect of the music, we can get over that, okay? Rock, that, that's not even the worst scenario. The reason why the GTA Definitive Edition was actually so bad when it came out was it was actually based off of the mobile versions of Grand Theft Auto. So if you don't remember, you can buy GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, Liberty City Stories on a smartphone, okay? An Android or iOS smartphone. You can download those games and play them. They come with their own issues themselves, all right? They've got their own problems, graphical, gameplay-wise. They've got their own bugs, their own serious bugs. But uh, that's pretty much what you have to know. So, of course, the company behind this, Growth Street Games, also formerly known as War Drum Studios, they effectively ported all those mobile versions of the games over back in 2011, 2012. Their earliest project was a PS2 game, Ghostbusters, back in 09. Now, I'm not dogging on Warstrom or Growth Street Games. They were working with the best they had. We're talking about an understaffed studio. We're talking about a studio that had maybe like two years, if that, to develop all these games over onto the Definitive Edition. And what they did was they used the mobile ports that had their own issues to create the Definitive Edition. So to understand, the Definitive Edition is built upon a foundation that was already bugged, okay? They took, they didn't even work off of the PS2, Xbox, original PC code. No, 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 They used the mobile versions of these games that had their own bugs. So you're talking about a compounding software, you know, calamity all in one. Now, of course, when this game launched, you had your own issues. You had collision problems, which you, you kind of still do to an extent. Obviously, it's gotten better. Uh, they used AI upscale textures, which completely destroyed some of the actual jokes within the textures because they were working with such low resolution assets that when they threw it into an AI upscaler, it was actually destroying sentences and phrases all in one. So I think this one AI upscaling aspect was probably the most egregious thing to me because it's not even as if uh, Grove Street Games or Wardrum had low resolution source assets to work with. But back in the day when these games launched on the PlayStation 2, they got re-released for the Xbox. And at the time, you know, Rockstar could have easily just half-assed ported the job over to the Xbox, but instead they decided to use the extra capabilities of the Xbox hardware, which was substantially more powerful than the PlayStation 2 at the time. And it's wild to see because those original Xbox assets have been kind of retroactively put into these uh, definitive editions by actual modders. So you can get better looking textures more true to the original game just by, uh, you know, actual modders putting love and care into the game versus the development teams that were getting paid, I would assume, big bucks to remake what are some of the biggest you know, gaming icons imaginable. It's wild. It's wild to me how much extra effort Rockstar even put into the Xbox version of GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, because they had the extra capabilities to work with. Again, you know, it's insane with the texture work, with the, sorry, with the, with the hardware we have now. One of the oldest uh, sort of like uh, memorable things you could find with older GTA games was when you drove really fast, uh, vehicles just randomly appeared, okay, in front of you. And that's because you're dealing with a system that had 32 megabytes of memory at the time. You know, you're dealing with processors that are, you know, paling in comparison to what we have nowadays. So for them to load in assets on the fly off of a DVD was insane. This is the best they could do. It's wild to me, given that we have SSDs, marginal, substantially faster processors, multiple threads, a crap ton of RAM these days, that we cannot have the game world loading seamlessly and actually have traffic loaded in front of us rather than having it pop in. Footage from the PC version of Vice City, Three San Andreas Definitive still shows that that whole like asset loading uh, system that they have literally feels like it's from the PlayStation 2. And again, you could be like, but Muda, isn't this kind of like reflective of the original experience? And, and yeah, you can be faithful to the original like piece, but you can also use the hardware you have nowadays to push the game to where it should have been initially or what your initial goal was. Again, it's wild to see these issues, and they're left unpatched, and, and, and you know, honestly, given the fact that this game hasn't been patched even for these updated releases, these anniversary releases, they'll never get touched again. But anyways, let's get back to the, to, to the video. And of course, War Drum, you know, Grove Street Games, patched the game up and fixed a fair bit of that, okay? Uh, of course, you've also got situations where the rain graphic was like absolutely overpowering visuals. I think the worst was San Andreas, where if you had any verticality in the game, like if you were standing on the Maze Bank Tower, you could just look around and see the entire game world rendering around you. 
all the way up to the edges of the ocean. Which, if you ever play the original PlayStation 2 San Andreas, you want to know the wildest thing about that game? You could actually fly all the way out into the ocean. The game would just render that section of, like, ocean out, and it would give you the feeling of this never-ending island. You can't do that with the Definitive Edition. You go to the edge, it knocks you back like a game of Pac-Man! Now, of course, they even fixed this. They added the ability to have ground haze so you could get some, you know, level of depth, you could get some distance, you could get some obfuscation. Point is, the game had its issues, the game had its problems. A lot of those have relatively been fixed. Of course, the actual core of a buggy, broken mobile release will never be completely repaired. I don't care what anyone says, what copium is huffed, that will never be completely fixed. So again, these are broken, inferior versions of what are supposed to be one of gaming's most iconic titles out there. So that's the one big problem with the Definitive Edition, right? So obviously, looking at it now, uh, it's basically been abandoned for months, all right? So ever since they majorly patched the game a few months ago, several months ago, uh, they haven't really looked at the game since then. So the reason I'm making a video about this is very recently, very, very recently, they just announced the games on Steam. In fact, they released them on Steam themselves. And I think it's time we look at just how bad this can be. Now, Rockstar is running the 70% off sale. They have the balls to sell you GTA Red Dead Online, okay? A game they've pretty much abandoned. They don't care about this. Uh, they're definitely selling you GTA 5 Premium Edition. Hey, kitties, you want to get those shark cards? Get an get a early start in your criminal enterprise? Yeah, it's right there, too. But the worst offender is this $40 purchase for GTA The Trilogy, okay? What is an $80 purchase somehow, okay? It's $80 for this pile of crap. They're putting it down for 50% off. So apparently it's a good deal now, okay? You're getting it on a Steam sale. Let's be real, they haven't updated this game at all. It's still got some bugs in it, it's still got some problems. Is it as bad as some would say? I would actually disagree. I would say you can complete these games all the way through the end. Obviously, you can finish GTA 3 Vice City San Andreas completely. Uh, but should it should you even tolerate games that have these levels of bugs and incompetencies to begin with? No, no, you shouldn't. Look, at the end of the day, look, Cyberpunk 1.0 was playable start to finish. Doesn't mean it was the greatest experience imaginable, right? So that's pretty much what you have to go in walking in. So of course, these games have been re-released, and for some reason, they've been getting mixed reviews. Whoa, shocker. Now, of course, I wanted to be really charitable over here, and I wanted to see maybe is this selling like hotcakes? And it actually seems like for a GTA re-release, even though these are older games, the Definitive Edition has actually not been selling like the hotcakes we are known to believe, right? It's got an all-time peak of 1,600 players, and uh, actually, compared to the original San Andreas, it's not too far off. Um, it, it's not so much better off than the original release in terms of active player counts. I think most people have realized it's easier to mod the original GTA San Andreas and make it just a better experience than whatever definitive pile of crap they're putting on. I think one of the best reviews is from this one right here. You know when a review is this long? You've made a mistake. This is all the problems this person has pointed out, rightfully so. One of them being the censorship, for instance, even the game's original dismemberment engine, if you ever played GTA 3 or Vice City, has been fairly toned down to, to service for a much newer, modern audience, if you will, too. But I think nothing hits me harder than a full year later and almost nothing has changed. It's been a year since we've had a sizable update. Look, at the end of the day, I, I started this video saying something was a scam, and I think nothing is more obvious of a scam as when Rockstar is willing to sell titles like this where they've even straight up abandoned. Look, if you are willing to release projects like this for $80 and not service them and make them as buck-free as you can, you should at least allow people to buy the original versions of these games. Because one thing to understand, the original versions were not clean either. If you play the PC version of San Andreas Vice City 3, they had their own goddamn bugs anyways. But at least the modding community was at least more favorable to Rockstar at the time and created a bunch of projects simply known as the GTA Definitive Edition, the Definitive Edition Project, where anybody could take any of Rockstar's games, like for instance, this is San Andreas's Definitive Edition Project. You can download this project right here and actually install it yourself and get a definitive version of GTA San Andreas for the PC, Vice City, and 3. You know, the other big reality is there is so much, there's so much love for this that there are reverse engineered versions of GTA 3 and Vice City that you can grab. 
if you can find it on the internet, that is, and build it yourself and get a better, original, true classic experience than whatever Rockstar is making with these definitive piles of crap. You know, the other option, the, literally the only way I play these games at this point is by taking the original PS2 copies, backing them up onto my PC, running them through PCSX2 with all the enhancements that I could imagine, all right? Upscaling, frame rate patches, whatever you call it, and playing the game that way. Because at least that's one way that Rockstar just can't take my purchase away from me. Look, at the end of the day, this is important to me because it's kind of like remake. It, it's like, imagine if Konami remade Metal Gear Solid 2 and re-released it. Sure, they made it look shinier and prettier, but in doing so, they added more bugs to the game. They reduced the overall quality of the original project um, in certain ways and just released that. And that was the only way to buy the game, period. It's kind of like that for me. Looking at the Definitive Edition, I think one of the hardest things that hits me the most is just how much less effort has gone into creating these projects and how much less of an impact they have. If you load up San Andreas back on the PlayStation 2, it literally pushed that system to its limits. You're talking about a game that was absolutely trying to render as much of it can, as much as it can. A game, a game franchise that went from rendering single cities all the way to a goddamn state creating an amazing single player experience all the way through and selling it for a good clean $60, all right? Trying to make it as buck free as you can. Obviously, when it comes to game development, can something be completely buck free? No, not really. But should something drop in a state like GTA Definitive Edition and be sold for full price? And for some reason, Rockstar thinks that's actually acceptable? Because here's the thing, this isn't like Midnight Club or some tiny franchise that Rockstar can stealth release. This is, these are arguably the three games that have put their company on the map. GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas, market juggernauts when they dropped, all right? You might not be a GTA fan, but people can very much agree that when San Andreas, Vice City, and 3 dropped back on the PlayStation 2, it blew everyone's minds collectively. I still remember how amazing it felt to drive through Liberty City, GTA 3, for the first time on PlayStation 2, watching the sun go down, and absolutely being let down playing some of these versions of the games today. It's wild to see that a company like Rockstar can sell this and even think for a minute that it's actually acceptable. You know, one of the things that really speaks out to me about this project is like, at the end of the day, it's not even just Rockstar that you can blame, it's the actual gamers themselves. I see people who look at this and act like, you know, it's not the worst. People are just hating on Rockstar for no reason or hating on this project. Guys, this is not an indie company, all right? At the end of the day, they have made so much money off the backs of gamers from just one title alone that you would think they could at least give back to their fans, their community in some way by creating three of the most iconic games they've ever made with actual in-house love versus shipping that out to a company that they even screwed over just by sheer principle alone. It is the wildest thing. If anybody can defend that in the gaming sphere, this is why modern gaming is in the state that it is. Because we've went from actually having video games that, sure, may not have been as pretty looking as the ones today, but they had more soul and effort put into them. I started this video off by saying one of the most positive experiences I've had was playing something like Persona 4 Golden very recently. Might not be the prettiest game, but it's from an era where I swear there was more love and effort put into gaming than some of the stuff that we've seen nowadays. Honest to God, it's not like Rockstar can't even achieve this. They've made games like Red Dead Redemption 2, absolutely amazing single player titles. Not to see why they couldn't have remade some of their most iconic games in this way. You've got gaming experiences like Mass Effect Legendary Edition, okay? EA, Bioware, literally. They were not willing to compromise on their original project. They gave pretty much all the pieces of DLC for that game, save Pinnacle Station, save the multiplayer for three, but they provided an amazing experience, a smooth experience, a visually superior experience, and they did it all at the same price Rockstar is willing to do. It's literally a tale of two worlds. You got GTA Definitive Edition literally circling the drain, and you had like Mass Effect Legendary Edition absolutely blowing like fish out of the water. But of course, I think my anger pretty much needs to subside here. I'm pretty much done with it. Rockstar doesn't care about the definitive edition, and neither should you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am.